The Chicago Bulls showed up in the way that I think many of us were afraid that they were going to show up against the Cleveland Cavaliers, losing the game, albeit by one point, but going on big scoring droughts and Zach Levine not really showing up in the second half in the way that we needed him to. We're going to talk about that, dive into the mailbag right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans, so after a nice feel-good victory against the Detroit Pistons in which the Bulls showed some heart, uh, the Bulls drop a game to the Cleveland Cavaliers in which they should have very well been able to be in the game. Um, And so, you know, uh, again, another tell of of the first half from the Chicago Bulls, you know, losing that first quarter, I'm sorry, winning that first quarter 28-30, to then in the second quarter losing it 32-25, to uh, losing the second quarter as well by two points, but then in the fourth quarter, even though the Bulls scored 25 points and went on a run, they also went on a scoring drought, right? Um, just one field goal in the final five minutes for the Chicago Bulls. Um, I will say this, though, right? Regardless of the result, um, the Bulls showed some things. They were able to hang with the Cavs for the most part. But it just, it, we didn't have the impact that we needed. When it came down to it, the Bulls just did not make the necessary buckets to deserve to be in that game down the stretch, giving up another big game to Kevin Love. Uh, Karis LeVert with 23 points. Uh, DeMar DeRozan did have 21. Zach Levine with 15. Io DeSumo with 19 points. Nikola Vucevic with another double-double. But at the end of the day, it's this. The Bulls get out-rebounded by 10 rebounds. Uh, They have another 15 turnovers. um, And they just didn't win that part of the battle. We're not going after loose balls. But one of the things that I want to highlight with this, and this is a quote from Karis LeVert. He says, I think the whole world knew who was going to take the last shot. Uh, who was in De- uh, he was in DeMar DeRozan's face and it says he makes those shots all the time so while paying respect to the fact that DeMar DeRozan does hit the shots the whole world knew who it was going to and that goes back to some of the predictability from this coaching staff the heavy heavy relying on DeMar DeRozan in the fourth quarter and to the, the credit I get it today the, the fact of the matter is is that you needed to with Zach Levine not having a great second half at all like his second half was nearly was basically terrible um not getting any other big nights really from anyone else shout out to Javante Green uh with 12 points off the bench but again this game was just one of those games that the Bulls just did not do what they needed to do in the fourth quarter to win this game they just didn't and that is something that really hurts this team big time and as long as this team goes through things like that it's going to it's going to be hard for this team to find a way to win games the fact that the the Cleveland Cavaliers did not trail us at all in the second half of that game just shows how the Bulls just did not execute a better second half of basketball. The Bulls are in this game. Now, again, as I've said before, I didn't need the Bulls to win every single game in a row. I just need to see a consistent, renewed effort from the Chicago Bulls. And at least in parts of this game, we got that. Some of the hard things, some of the hustle plays we missed out on big time, and the Cleveland Cavaliers just took advantage of it, as they should. Um, this is a, a loss that's frustrating. And it, like I said, that as much as DeMar is DeMarvelous in the fourth quarter, I think we all know that when this team gets into close games, they're going to have to find a way to vary the play calling because teams know if you can keep it close with the Chicago Bulls and God forbid if you can get it to one possession with the last few seconds left, every every team knows it's going to DeMar DeRozan. This team needs to step up. Zach Levine has to get back to, to again, we don't need the 40-point nights every single night, but Zach has to play better in in the second half this is a game that if Zach Levine played better in the second half the Bulls win this game period Vooch hits a few more shots the Bulls win this game so if some of it's on the coaching staff some of it's on the players and this this loss was just a frustrating loss because of the way that it went down when it all boiled down to it let me know how you guys feel about this loss down below let's go ahead this is Sunday Mailbag episode. Let's get into the voicemail of the first one. This one's from Auntie. Hey, yo, this your Auntie Gone. Good morning. Hey, five out of six, I will take. Hey, how about that game last night? Hey, one thing I got to say, I love what I'm saying. I guess we had a couple of bulls that to get their attention and make their ass start acting right. I don't know what they have been having for the last five out of six games. Whatever the fuck they smoking and eating, keep smoking and eating. Because I love what the fuck I'm saying. Hey, if we come out like this, playing every night, not coming out playing lazy and not giving a fuck, everybody coming out involved, moving, cutting, 
helping each other out on defense, uh, making offensive plays. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, Billy Donovan, rotation looking good. Play is looking good. Hey, I ain't got nothing bad to say. I'm up smoking this morning. I'm real proud of the boy. I'm, look, bro, I'm happy as shit. I'm glad to see what I'm seeing. Hopefully, the next four, five games, it's hard. It's going to be hard, but this mentality that we may come out for the last couple games, we got to come out tonight with Cleveland because Cleveland ain't no bitch and they not going to play with us. We in Chicago, they not going to play with us. So, only thing I got to say, get your man right, get y'all shit together, game time tonight. Y'all know what y'all got to come to Chicago do. See these bitches back to Cleveland so we can meet their ass there, beat their ass there, and come back home to Chicago and do our shit. Hey, that's all I got to say. Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, Vooch, Billy Dullard, I like I like what I'm seeing. Continue doing y'all job. Hey, Zach, life's in the sandstorm. Your knees is back, baby. I, I understand it. Your knees is back. Them knees is back, baby. You flying to the 12th floor, goddamn. Do your shit, Zach. You did that last night. You took control. That's what you supposed to do, Zach. Every fucking night. Two hundred fifteen million dollar man. This what the fuck you do? You take over. You see they have the double the mark. That's what you come in at. That's what Bush come in at. Good motherfucking job. Good motherfucking job, Chicago Bulls. I love what the fuck I'm seeing, goddamn. I don't give a fuck who uh Detroit didn't have playing. That state business, that state problem. We got our W. Let's go, Cleveland. That's all. Hey, we on the next game. Let's go. This is what I'm talking about. Let's go. And this was clearly left before. The Cleveland Cavaliers game. Um, and listen, you know, shout out to Goon, who, you know, is, is going to the Cle- – did go to the game last night. And, you know, I kind of said that on yesterday's mailbag. The thing with this team is all this team has to do is compete. And that's what Goon's voicemail is saying is just how good it is to see this team play with some heart. That's all Chicago desires, right? No, let me not say all. We want wins. We want to get to the title. We want to do all those things. But we will respect a team that plays with heart. That's all you have to do is play with heart. Do that consistently. Act like you want to be there. Act like the city, like the Bulls in Chicago across your chest matters to you. That's all we want, right? Act like that. Pay the respect to that. It sucks that we lost another game at home against the Cleveland Cavaliers, and this is our last time to face them at home. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. This team just has to compete. And now they're back at four games below 500. And we have another voicemail for Marvin, and we're going to talk about some of that. But at the end of the day, is this the Bulls team? This is not all is lost. The loss sucks to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Let's see if they can revenge it. Um, but it's good to hear Goon, who on her voicemail yesterday, um, leaves another one and just it, how this team could turn around. Like, we just want to see this team play hard. That's it. Just play hard. All right, let's go ahead and get to the next voicemail. This one's from Marvin. Morning, guys. Morning, Ace. Marvin here. Just wanted to give a little fun fact, man. Um, uh, before I start, Happy New Year to everybody, but did want to mention this, guys. It's ironic about something about this season, how, how this season is gone. I want to give a little statement on something. Last year, the Bulls at this present date were 26 and 10, and we were all riding a great high. Last year, on this present date, the Boston Celtics were 16 and 19, the exact opposite of what the Bulls are this year, which were 26 and 10 last year, and now they're 16 and 19. Boston was the same last year. The reason I bring it up, not to compare Boston with the Bulls, but just to say there is hope and optimism. If the Bulls can turn this season around while also being 15-19 with one of the toughest schedules in the first half and one of the easiest schedules going down the stretch this year. So hopefully the Bulls can turn that around. Now, we still have issues as far as offensive rebounding, defensive rebounding, and putting up the three. But with a little help, guys, I think the Bulls can turn this season around. They're showing promise here late. We had a good game last year. We got a tough game coming up tonight. But let's see what the Bulls can do. I'm not here to give just praise on what the Bulls are doing against a team like Detroit, which is, that's a game we should have won. But let's see if we can get this, this season turned around. I think the Bulls are figuring things out, guys. And if they do, there's always a chance. Remember, Austin was 16 and 19 on this present day last year. They played today and went to 17 and 19. Let's see if the Bulls can get to 17 and 19 today. Have a good New Year, guys. Peace. I wanted to call in one more time before the year was over. Take care, Ace. Later. And Marvin makes a great point about how the Bulls right now currently sit basically at the same place that the Boston Celtics were at this point last season. Now, we did lose last night to the Cleveland Cavaliers, so that does change some things. But the season's far from over. Right, we all know that, and we all understand that. Just when 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 you look at the standings, the standings are so close that the Bulls still going on a run. I've I've, I've said it, right? 
We're going to know if the Bulls are able to get themselves in playoff contention or not by January 15th. If there's if they even have a, a bad stretch over this, is there a small chance that they could turn around their season? Yeah, but I'm saying this has to be it, right? This has to be it. They have to they have a, a stretch against teams that are better com- com- competitors. They have to come out of this stretch as close to 500 as possible. And then we can talk about what that second half of the season is going to look like for the Chicago Bulls. 36 games played right now on a on a 40 on a 81 game season. And so by the end of this stretch, by the end of the stretch, we'll play about, I think we'd have about 40, 43 um, games played. So we're going to be past the halfway mark of the season. So we have to see how this team is going to play and is going to compete um, with the, with the remaining games left on the schedule. The next eight games are going to be tough. It's going to be tough for the Chicago Bulls. So we'll see what happens. We'll see where the Bulls can be and can, and, and can uh, sit at, but the season isn't all over, but I tell you what, as much as many, almost as many times we see flashes of goodness into greatness of what this team could be, they almost follow it up with something that makes us doubt what we just watched. And so, while the Cleveland Cavaliers game is no long, no, by no stretch of the imagination, like this terrible blowout loss, but it look when you look at the way that the second half went for the Chicago Bulls, it's just it's frustrating. But to Marvin's point, the season isn't over. Let's see how far the season can get. For the Chicago Bulls. All right, let's get into this last voicemail. Then we got two comments to do after this one. This last voicemail, this one's from Paul. Yeah, hey, hi, this is uh, Paul. And I was just commenting on the Bulls' loss tonight against the uh, Cavs. Um, it's two major points I saw. Nobody really going after loose balls twice. The offensive board ball hit the floor and goes back out there to a guy and they hit a three. And there was like three balls, and no one dived, no one reacted to the ball. They just let the ball go right by them. Um, and secondly, it just shows that Billy's not a good coach. I don't care what no one says. Um, you got six seconds left. You give the ball to Demar in isolation, and he takes it down there in the coffin corner and is double teamed for a circus shot to win the freaking game. You know, um, that just shows how poor of a coach he is in game time situations. And uh, other than that, I, I really don't have any comments. Thanks, Bill. And Paul airs the frustrations about Billy Donovan's coaching. Now, it said, you know, the Bulls not going after loose balls, the poor coaching from Billy Donovan down the stretch. I, I you know, all things that I that I've already talked about on this episode, and that I agree with. Like that play call from Billy Donovan, while I understand the play call and DeMar is is able to work magic more times than not, that it just, it, you could tell in that game, something just, yeah, the Bulls just didn't have it. It was a tough loss. It was a weird game and the Bulls just didn't have it. And it kind of all got into the perfect picture in that last play. Just the Bulls just did not have enough to get over the hump. Now see what we have tomorrow night when we face the Cleveland Cavaliers on Monday, but um, you know, to, to Paul's point, I think a lot of people are frustrated in it. I think a lot of people have the frustration in where the Bulls, the game went for the Chicago Bulls, because that was a game in which you really could have turned your season around. So we'll see. Um, I, you know, we'll see, we'll see what it means, what it turns out to for the Chicago Bulls. Uh, it's just, man, it's tough to keep losing games like this. It's just tough. It's frustrating. It's disheartening. Um, and especially when you have a game in which, um, I, I'm not blaming it all on coaching. Let me be clear. I'm not blaming it all on coaching. I know, it, even though it seems like Paul doesn't seem like he's blaming it all on coaching either. But to say Billy Donovan, we've, we've talked about this. Billy Donovan is a good coach. But just because you're a good coach doesn't necessarily mean you're good for this team or this or this roster. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have bad moments. And so Billy Donovan has to figure something out. Like, I don't know how much that realistically they're going to change in this offseason. He got a contract extension. He's definitely coming back. But they need to look at, at changing a lot with this team, specifically on the offensive side of the ball. And we need to just be more consistently defensively. But if we can be better on the offensive side of the ball and, and just get a more creative offense going, uh, it can look a little a lot different for the Chicago Bulls. Like, and it's one of the things I've been saying on this show for a long time here now is that a lot of players on this team aren't used to the best of their ability. They're just not. They aren't. Not consistently enough. And so they haven't really had as much opportunity to really develop some of their skill sets that are already strengths in their game, much less build on top of things that they just haven't, you know, they, they need strengthened as a whole um, on top of that. So, you know, we'll see. This this loss was frustrating. I, I do think we're going to see a better prepared team in the second game. Usually when we face teams on back-to-backs and home-and-homes and things like that, we come out well, much more 
better prepared in that second uh, second game. So let's hope that trend continues for the Bulls and we end up splitting this home and home with the Cleveland Cavaliers, but we'll see. All right, let's get into this next one. These ones are comments left and the new they were, way we're doing comments so that it's easier for me to filter. Put mailbag at the beginning of your comments if you just want to leave a comment for a mailbag episode later on and you'll be able to get them talked about on this episode like you'll see here. But this one, this one is from uh, M- Mazur Alizera. Ariza, I'm sorry if I, if I murdered your name. It says, hello, Hayes, love your content. Please keep up the great work. At what point can we Bulls fans start to feel more confident in this team to at least make it to the playoffs? So far, they have been unpredictable, even though they have been showing lots of, of improvement. Here's what I'll say to this, and this is how I've been using it for my own metric is the consistency. They just, like, they have to do this consistently over, like, 10 to 15 games. Not saying they have to win those amount of games, but right now the Bulls are five, um, five and two in their last seven. Five and two in their last seven. And while those two losses suck, right, especially a loss against the Houston Rockets, they're five and seven. I mean, five and two in their last seven. So let's look. The, the rest of this, um, this away stretch, uh, the last part until January 15th, is eight more games. So at that point, that that's 14 games. That's a 14 game sample size. I'm, I'm not counting that right. That's a 15 game sample size, if I can count correctly. Um, and so because of that, we'll be able to really look at what this team uh, could be and is. And I think that if we, over the over the next eight games plus the seven that we just been through, that's when how they've played over that time. That's when we can tell how, who this team really is. That's who we can tell, and and we can start being more confident in this team's ability to make the playoffs. They right now, I don't think. Uh, give me one second. Let me look. Uh, they still right now are technically in the play-in tournament, and so if at the end of of these next eight games, as we talked about, the uh, if the if the Bulls do sit there, um, and they're still like, let's say they're the ninth or the eighth seed, or still the tenth seed, but they've been winning more consistently. Um, that's when I think it's time to just realize, okay, this Bulls team, if they continue to play they will the way they are, they're going to get some type of playoff berth. Um, but I, it becomes increasingly and more increasingly unlikely that this team is going to avoid the play-in um, unless they go on a great winning streak. So we'll see where that goes on that. All right, this next mailbag comment, um, this one was left by Brandon L. Jett, and it's, uh, Hayes, if AK had the choice to only re-sign two of, these, of the players below, which ones would you prefer? And he says, Vooch, Kobe White, Javante, Derrick Jones, and Andre Drummond. So I'm going Vooch, and I know that's probably going to be controversial because, again, when we play through Vooch, Vooch is one of the top 10 centers in the NBA, and he is a better overall center than Andre Drummond. So I'm going Vooch there. And then, man, um, I'll probably go Javante just because of the heart Javante plays with, and this is a team that needs this. But I'm saying it, it wasn't easy between picking Javante and Kobe White. There's parts of me that want to pick Kobe. He's younger, showing signs of being that uh, that defensive, uh, that that more two way player. And I do think that his offense is going to come around uh, to where he's uh, uh, consistent, about 12 points off the bench. And with the defense he's been playing and his ability to put the ball on the floor and pass, that's a pretty damn good bench player. Um, he's not the defender that that Javante is, even with his improved de- defense at all. And because this team surely lacks some defense, I'm going to go Javante in this one. But it was a very, very close with it being Kobe White. But that's what I picked. Let me know down below who, which players would you choose to keep um, out of those players that Brandon L. Jett mentioned down below. That's it for the, today's episode, man. This, this season is just such an interesting season to be a Chicago Bulls fan. That's all I can say. It's just been an interesting season. And I can't call it fun. They're, like last season, eat, like up until this point, last season was fun. And not just because we were winning, because of how tough the team played, how the team was playing together, like just seeing how the team rocked and rolled when they were firing on all cylinders, even with some injuries. It was just a fun season. I can't say that this season has necessarily been as fun, but it's been definitely as interesting. It's just, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. But hey, that's what we get into being Bulls fans and and everything that comes along with the territory. But as always, man, let me know what you guys think on everything down below. Sound off down below. Uh, just a tough game for the Chicago Bulls, a frustrating game at that. I love you guys, man. Make sure you're following the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullscentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And like I liked in every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See red and peace. This has been a presentation of The Break Media. Break, break, media. media.